Sony PlayStation 5 has been selling like hotcakes since its release back in November of 2020, and there seems to be no signs of slowing down anytime soon. Between rock-solid hardware and a consistent lineup of exclusives, the Japanese gaming giant has been making a string of mostly right decisions this console generation. In keeping with tradition established in the last generation, the PlayStation 5 is due for a mid-cycle refresh, and details on the new console, the PlayStation 5 Pro, have surfaced recently. While there is certainly debate to be had when talking about the actual utility of the console itself, there is always an interesting prospect in the technical department, and we can't help but wonder what it would cost to build a similarly specced out PC using off-the-shelf parts and retail prices. Before starting out with the feature, it's important to mention that we have only used off-the-shelf prices for brand new components, and building out a comparable PC with used components will undoubtedly come at a much cheaper cost. Also, we have tried to include components that were close to the PS5's hardware, as it's not feasible to have a one-to-one -one component list. And finally, the price for these parts may change in the future. With that out of the way, let's begin. The CPU the PS5 features a Zen 2-based custom chip with 8 cores and 16 threads along with support for boost clocks for increased performance, and that bump in single-core performance has opened new avenues for developers ranging from the sophisticated physics engines to better simulated environments and much more. For the Pro variant, Sony is keeping the same chip, though some reports may have indicated that some overclocking and tuning, dubbed as a high-frequency mode, might be at play which in turn would increase performance by 10% on the updated chip. For our PC, we're going with the Ryzen 5 5600, which comes in at around $115 on Amazon. It's the same chipset that we utilized for our PS5 comparison build, and it doesn't make much sense to spring out extra cash if we're going to build out a similarly specced machine as the base variant. Sporting six high-speed cores with support for multi-threading, the CPU should be able to handle a buffet of both single-core driven and multi-core driven workloads without leaving graphics performance on the cutting floor. The GPU The GPU is the beating heart of any gaming machine, and it makes total sense for Sony to put the majority of hardware upgrades in this department. The PS5 Pro uses the same RDNA 2 architecture as its younger brother, but an increase in number of cores and memory results in a significant performance boost over the base variant according to Sony's claims. In terms of the raw T-flops, the GPU is reported to be around 33.5 T-flops strong, and will feature around 60 compute units, 24 more than the base PS5. In addition to this, there are also improved RT features and AI-based upscaling courtesy of PlayStation Spectral Super Resolution, which would help games run faster and look better at higher resolutions in a more efficient manner. To match that level of performance, the RTX 4060 seems like a good bet. Between its 8GB of GDDR6 memory and the latest NVIDIA Ada Lovelace architecture, we can ensure that our GPU offers the best of features, like DLSS and efficient ray tracing cores, along with ample memory to handle those effects at comparable resolutions to the PS5. It should also be a good pair with our CPU, allowing both components to reach maximum utilization without bottlenecking one another. The RTX 4060 has a retail price of $299. RAM For the memory, we'll be going with our trusty Corsair Vengeance DDR4 3200mHz kit, which costs around $41 on Amazon. The PS5 Pro shares the same 16GB of system memory across both the CPU and GPU, which technically makes our 16GB overkill. But some games are not optimized well enough on PC to produce similar performance in the same amount of memory, which is why it makes total sense to go for a 16GB memory kit. Running memory in dual channels also yields better results, so that's another point of consideration. One could also throw in 32GB instead for future proofing purposes, but 16GB should be good for a one-to-one -one build for now. Motherboard for our motherboard, we'll be going with the Asus Prime B550 Plus ATX, which should be able to house our other components without any BIOS updates, and it's affordable enough to not break the bank. It's a rather basic board that offers basic features and nothing much more other than that, but at the asking price of just $99, it's a good deal. Storage the PS5 Pro bumps the storage from 825GB that was present on the base variant to 2TB for the Pro variant, which is a pretty smart move considering current-gen games can easily eat up hundreds of gigabytes, and storing anything more than a handful of games is pretty difficult. 
Our PC will match the same upgrade with the Samsung 990 EVO PCIe 4.0 SSD with 2TB of available space, which will cost us $129. Of course, load times might not be one-to-one -one across both machines, since PS5's architecture is a bit different than PC's, and not all games utilize Windows Direct Storage API, but it should be a good match nonetheless. PSU The PSU is always the most important piece of the puzzle when it comes to PC building, and there's no tangible reason to skimp out on a quality piece from a recognized manufacturer. Ticking those boxes without breaking the bank, we have the NZXT C1000 PSU, which provides just enough juice to power our system and the 80 plus gold certified rating is also a much appreciated badge of safety. It sells for $129 on Amazon and should serve as a good fit for our purposes. Cabinet for the cabinet, we're going with a Gamdius ATX Mid-Tower Gaming Computer PC case with side-tempered glass. As the name suggests, this case features a tempered glass side panel, minimal RGB lighting, and four fans to ensure good airflow. While it's not the most aesthetically pleasing case on the market, it gets the job done at a good enough price. And you can always spring up more cash for a better looking case in a more practical scenario. The Gamdius ATX Mid-Tower comes at $55 on Amazon. Conclusion Totaling the cost of the above-mentioned components, our proposed PC build comes in at… around $867. This obviously does not include the cost of peripherals like a keyboard-mouse combo and a license to a fresh copy of Windows, which would bring up the total cost closer to $1000. Going the PlayStation route gives access to a great library of first-party exclusives that you just can't get on PC, while going the other way gives you access to better deals and productivity options that are not possible on a console. In conclusion, the PC comes at a hefty premium, noticeably over the $700 retail price of the PS5 Pro, but it definitely paints a much more interesting picture when it comes to the comparison itself. The gap between the two builds is a lot slimmer than when the PS5 came out. The PS5 Pro claims significant superior performance over its younger brother thanks to the better AI upscaling features and bigger compute budget on the GPU, and it would be interesting to see how it all pans out in the coming months. Hey, did you know that we at Gaming Bolt upload new videos every day? Stick around, drop a like, subscribe, and hit that bell, and let us know what kind of content you'd like to see in the future with a comment below.